Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I see a lot of faces I know. I see some new faces. That's great. Um, my name's Heidi, and this is Vincent, and this is Abhijit, and we are three members of the Facebook Optics team. And our primary focus this year, last year, the next several years, is 100 gig CWDM4. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about me, a little personal story. My best friend is having a major milestone birthday this year. And the way that we plan to celebrate is we're going to go hike Machu Picchu this summer. So at the start of the year, I knew I needed to get in shape, needed to start planning. So I asked some friends at work, where should I start hiking? I'm new to the area. And they recommended the PG&E trail that's at Rancho San, uh, San Antonio. Yeah, Ho glad some of you know it because the story is much more relevant if you've actually tried it. So I got out one morning, I put on my camelback, I load on my hiking shoes and I start climbing. And the climb is fast and it's, it was instant. So I get up where I've been hiking about 30 minutes and I'm winded, I'm exhausted, I'm starting to second guess myself and I'm wondering, okay, do I turn around and go back? But I get to a plateau and I get to take this picture overlook in the valley and it was stunning. I was like, okay, well, I'm committed now, I'm gonna keep going. And I start to turn around and oh my God, it's another hill. It's a huge hill. It's a worse hill than the hill before. <laughs> 30 minutes later, I finally get to this level. And I'm thinking, oh my God, thank God. <laughs> I'm done, I'm tired. Well, I wasn't done yet. Still have to keep climbing. Fortunately, I was able to keep going. I was able to get to the top. It did kick my butt. <laughs> now, if you're wondering if you're in the wrong seminar and you accidentally came into the fitness one, you didn't. The relevance of this story is the, this hike is the second hardest climb that we've had to make over the past year. This is our 100 gig CWDM4 climb. And this shows you from 2016 through 2017, which if you attended the keynotes yesterday, you heard so much about what a, what a pain point it was to get enough supply on 100 gig. So true, we lived it every day. So we knew we needed to change the scenario going forward because we don't have plateaus and it doesn't slow down and it just keeps getting more and more steep. So we enlisted the help of all of our partners that we'd been working with we took the OCP approach and we said, we need more eyes on the problem. Help us solve how we're going to build to the capacities that we need. And we did. So what we're gonna talk to you about now is what we're doing as far as ensuring interoperability, assurance of supply, and quality and reliability. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Abhijit. Thank you, Heidi. Uh my name is Abhijit, and I work in manufacturing and quality team in Facebook. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So as Heidi showed, like the ramp up of 100G CWDM4 is really going, uh, dramatically going up for the next uh, few years. So to understand the problems at the early stage was very important for us. And uh, when you look at, we tried to get as details as possible by testing at internally at Facebook. And we found, if you look at the graph on the left side, uh, uh, the bottom one, most of the failures of the 100G CWDM4 is coming from the laser. So uh, if we take out that bar, it's like almost 96, 97% failures we are seeing currently, it's from the laser. So these are the few examples. There are several examples we have found out, but these are few typical examples I just wanted to share with the, uh, with the team. Like uh, the first one you are seeing, the green one, is like kind of mode spreading issue, what, what we are seeing. The problem is when, when you see this kind of mode, mode spreading, uh, your, like I, the previous uh, talk, like when you were talking about through I square C, you read the data, those will not show up in, I, I believe, in that 
uh, tool because it will always take the resultant power from those two peaks. So basically it will show the module is good, however your link is down. So this is a very interesting problem we found uh, and because there are several parts which is showing good on the optical uh, transmitter side, but the link is down. Then we figure it out that this is coming like mode spreading issue. And also there are some bad channels and also SMSR issue that side mode suppression issues. So those are several issues we are trying, we are still uh, trying to understand what kind of mode issues we can see for different technologies, different suppliers and uh, we are trying to prevent it ASAP so that we can run it smoothly. Okay, having said that, the, the most uh, major part in our team right now is to f uh, focus on the reliability and quality, and I will pass it to Vincent to talk over that. Uh, thank you very much, Abhiji and uh, Heidi. I like hiking. Uh, but uh, when I have this uh, 100 gig uh, pro program started, and then as Abhiji mentioned that we have a lot of failure in the earlier uh, stages, and then try to understand the whole pictures, and actually uh, we took a little bit uh, deep diving on that. Um, the approach we have it here, this is the first slide we're going to show in, to understand the, the failure mode, and then for the, the problem deploying on the field. And the second one is uh, the problem we are going to address in how we can solve this problem to, on the field. So this is a very famous uh, bus stop, and then um, you know all the product uh, whenever it's ready to the production, they almost finish in, in uh, optical uh, uh, industry, they will finish the Tecolia standard, which indicated that this lifetime on the bus stop it should be flat. So meaning is there wear, wear out the failure is not going turn up within the lifetime. But the problem where, where, while we are seeing right now is as you mentioned that majority of the, our problem actually is from laser. And also within this two or three years deployment, uh, we found almost 99% of the failure actually is uh, failed during this we call the provisioning phases, which is uh, on power within one month, two months, okay? So that is indicated of, of this curve, okay? In the very beginning, you have this high failures and then where this is a screening process in the factory should be keeping the, this on the field to perform well. But if this is curve is shifting this direction, then we have a problem on the earlier phases. So that is what we understand. By understanding that, so basically we're working with our partners to understand why it happens like that way. So I, we, as we said, most of the problem is coming from laser. And then so we try to address the laser failure in the factory. And then by increasing, you know, uh, like a, uh, forcing a more stressful uh, burning process in the factory on the laser set, uh, as well. And in some, some area we saw the laser is not the burning itself, but it get some like we so called the ESD damage. And that is actually, uh, we, we found out some related with the assembly process. So this gave us a little bit of pictures on the whole industry for the assembly from a concept to the product, and then where you want to, um, uh, to address it. So if you go to the next one. And then um, another uh, area where we feel very challenged is about the field uh, of the, uh, the deep, uh, the, the troubleshooting. Think about that, and in our uh, big data center, whenever you have one port get failures, uh, normally this uh, port, the receive side is on one physical location, the transmitter port could be like a couple hundred meters away. So from operational perspective, there's no way that you can solve the problem um, checking the both sides simultaneously by two operators. So there's no way. And then, so this is the way we try to develop in the, we call the portable devices that can help our technician to hand carry over to distinguish the physics, um, the, uh, the failures of that optics or whether it's uh, uh, related with the internet. So that is uh, something like we're going to working with, uh, with our partner to develop this tool for our data center. And then we want to share this, uh, whenever this technology is uh, uh, mature, we will introduce into the OCP. So let's turn it over. So. so we're often asked how everyone can get their optics into the OCP fold. So this is your first stop. So we partner with University of New Hampshire to do interoperability lab testing. We give them our internal hardware. 
So if you are interested in getting your optics qualified into OCP, please go here first, first stop. And thank you, that's all we have. I don't, I don't know if we have time for questions. I think we started a little bit late. Sure. One, one or two, go ahead. Uh, it seemed to me that based on the uh, failure that you were showing, uh, that's something that I've actually seen that was very common and well-known you know, industry you know, a decade or so ago. And uh, this was related to uh, you know, self-pulsating lasers, uh, which existed, you know, people used uh, CD lasers. And look, if you look at the behavior that you showed, basically what happens is that relaxation oscillation of the laser degraded over time to a point where that you know, starts you know, causing uh, eye degradation and penalty. But when you measure the power, the power will perfectly be fine, and it's very, especially with CWDM4, will even be more difficult to determine that you have a failure. But, but actually, you, you will have, if you measure it, you will actually see more, much more jitter in your output. And in some cases, actually, with these lasers, my recollection was that you had to pretty much go and replace the whole field, you know. There wasn't really, if, if you have some of these in your skew, there was not much around, you know, it was just so unpredictive how their behavior were that the only solution was to replace and clean the field, you know, of all those devices. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much for the comment. And uh, actually, we noticed this uh, issue and we try to distinguish uh, uh, um, uh, the, the failures mode in this uh, uh, causing by, uh, we call the of uh, the defects diffusing or inside the grading area, or versus another environment related. So uh, next talk, we can talk about this a little bit more. Okay, thanks. Thank